right there. This guy. Right. Uh, this. Drawings. Those. All right. This one. There we go. Good. A couple people. Yeah. All right. Good morning. Um, we're gonna do upper extremity vasculature. All right, so this one's not going to be uh, too, too long, but you're going to, again, you're going to want to go back to it a bunch of times. Make sure that you can um, see the difference between the arteries and the veins and the nerves, and you're going to want to use the drawings uh, while we're going over this to be able to figure out what you're looking at. So um, I, I said in that email this morning, and let me just move the camera down into place here. Get down, 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 where we need to be. It's upside. Oh, we gotta fix that weight. Balance there. That's good. Let's just get out a little bit. There we go. Perfect. That looks better. Okay. Um. So I had mentioned that email that I was working on a drawing. Uh, we're gonna throw it up on the screen. Can you just pop that one up there? All right, so you see that drawing that just came up on the screen there. Uh, I added that under the lab module on Canvas. So if you go over there, uh, I put it up so you can download a copy of that so you can have it. I would recommend just having this up the whole time in the beginning, all right? Um, I don't know. We might try to fit it on the screen if we can while we're going over this, but um, – and, and you know what? We should probably rotate that thing if we are going to keep it on the screen. Yeah. Um, so we, we're going to see how it works out with screen wise, like real estate wise, like if, if we can fit that on there reasonably and also show you everything um, that we need to show you. If not, then we'll just kind of flip it on, uh, you know, just again, when we get to that point so that you know what we're looking at and then you want to have your own um, copy. All right. Available. So, oh, and I see I did forget to label something on there. It's fine. Um, you guys will be able to, to stick it in there. Uh, all right, and the only reason I did that is because this area for the arteries in the upper extremity is significantly different than what your handout drawing shows. So I wanted you to have like kind of a master copy of something that matches this particular body. It just makes it a lot easier. Uh, for the this will be for the um, for the arteries in the arm. Once we cross over to the forearm, we're just going to use your handout drawing because that one works pretty well. So you're going to want that one that we have up on the screen. Uh, or that we had up on the screen there. Oh, it's still up there. Yeah. And you're also going to want this one too, brachial arteries. All right. So you're going to want both of those and just make sure you yeah, we're focused in here. So you want, you want to be able to look at this one and the other one. Now, if you're looking at this one, the drawing I just gave you replaces this part of the drawing. So you can see how it kind of, we got that anterior scalene muscle there, right? And we got subclavian artery coming underneath there and traveling down this way with all of these branches. And that's the drawing that I just gave you. And, and I stopped the drawing right about here, right? So from here down, we can just use this. This, this matches the body just fine. It's just this part up here. That's a little different. So you're going to want to have access to this one. Then we're going to do this one, which are the superficial uh, veins of the upper extremity. So you're going to want that. And you're also going to need uh, this one here, which is the brachial plexus drawing. 
All right. So those, these ones are all in your handout. So there's three of them that you're going to want to use there. All right. Uh, upper extremity arteries, upper uh, the superficial veins, and then the brachial plexus. So you're going to want those and also that drawing that I just um, told you about that's under the lab module. All right. On Canvas. Those are the ones we want. All right. So let's get this uncovered a little bit and we'll kind of get going here. All right, so let's just move up a little. Let me just zoom out just a touch. We're gonna end up zooming back in, but whoops, I just hit the button, sorry. Uh, knocked the cord. Yeah, one more time on there. Gotta do it again. There we go. There we go, all right. So just wanna Zoom out a little bit so we know where we are. All right, so um, he's face up. You can see the shoulder here. Here are the chest muscles here. I'm standing on the right side of the body, so I'm looking in on the right. Here's the neck. You can see the chin and the mouth there, right? So we're going to take platysma, and we're going to reflect that one up out of the way. So get that out of there. We're going to take sternocleidomastoid, and we're going to reflect that out of the way as well. We're going to take pectoralis major and pectoralis minor, and we're going to reflect those out of the way. And I'm just going to cover those ones up so the muscles don't get dried out. So we're just going to just going to cover those up a little bit like that. Okay. And let me grab my instruments here and a probe. All right, and then we had, whoops, upside down. We had this muscle that we had identified already, and that was your um, subclavius muscle, right? This one, so we get that guy out of the way, and I'm just gonna tuck that up underneath the towel so it doesn't get in our way. And then we also, remember, had those veins that we have already identified, right? That was your internal, external jugular and your subclavian vein that we had cut, right? So we're also gonna, just have those out of the way a little bit, right? So all that stuff is gone out of the way, and this is where we're starting. So just to orient you with the, the picture that you have, right? Here is your anterior scalene muscle, all right? So that's what we have on that picture that I gave you, anterior scalene. And you can see here, if I can just open this up a little bit right there. So there is your subclavian artery passing underneath of anterior scalene muscle, and here is your subclavian artery continuing here, right? So your drawing right now is following this under there, down, 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 down to about here. This is about where I kind of cut the drawing off down here. So we're looking at this whole area there and all of the branches off, right? So we're going to zoom in a little bit. We're going to start zoomed in here, and then we'll kind of work our way down like that. But I just wanted to give you an overview of kind of where we're at, all right? Now let's just zoom in a little, not all the way, but just a bit, a bit more like that. Yeah, it's just right there. All right, so first thing you wanna note is when we're following this main vessel down, right, in this whole area that I'm outlining here, that this vessel here, here, up in there, right? That it undergoes some name changes as it travels through the different regions of the body here. So up in this area, you can see where the uh, proximal end of the clavicle is. We cut the clavicle here. The other part of the clavicle is right there, right? So here's where we cut the clavicle out. So I'll kind of put the probe in place there. So this is where the clavicle would have sat. So when this vessel passes under the clavicle, that's where we call it subclavian. All right. So in this area, this main vessel is called subclavian. Once it goes through your armpit, which would be in this area, and that your armpit is called your axillary fossa. Okay. So as that vessel passes through the axillary fossa, it takes on the name axillary artery in here. And then once we emerge from the axillary fossa and we start traveling down here along the arm or along the um, humerus, then we start calling this your brachial artery. Okay. So again, in this area, this long vessel got 
three names depending on the region, and we'll just say, you know, one, two, three, right? First one up here, subclavian, second one, axillary, third one, brachial artery. So subclavian artery, axillary artery, brachial artery. So if I wanted to ask you that, I could say identify this, this artery here holding this one, or I could grab it down here and say identify this artery here, and I want to know what it's called here or here or there, or I might say, you know, grab that artery and say, identify that artery. It's got three regions, right? One, two, three. I want to know what it's called up here, here, here. That's how I'd ask it on the practical. So it should be very clear. Okay. All right. So let's zoom in a little bit up here. So do something like that. All right. Now, first thing, you want to notice here are those arteries that we had identified first half. Remember, remember that branch that came off that split into three things, right? Now I've cut these arteries a little bit so that they're not covering things here, right? But that was your thyrocervical trunk with your inferior thyroid, transverse cervical, and suprascapular arteries, right? So we just kind of cut those, get them back out of the way a little bit. We had that phrenic nerve right? That sat on top of your anterior scalene muscle. That's here, right? So we did all of the stuff up in here already. Now we're following subclavian after it emerges from underneath your anterior scalene muscle. All right. So on that drawing there, you're going to see two branches right after we pass underneath anterior scalene. You're going to see one going superiorly. That's going to be your costo cervical trunk. And you're going to see one going inferiorly, and that's going to be your superior thoracic artery. All right, so let's find those two. So we're looking right up in here. Now, look, I'm going to take this and I'm going to move it over a little bit. And we see this branch right here. See this guy coming off? You see how that kind of hooks around there? That is your costo cervical trunk, right, coming off the superior side of subclavian. And then you see this one, and it, and it actually broke a little bit. It's very small. See, this guy broke, and it would have gone right down in between the first and the second rib, like right here, and that would be your superior thoracic artery. So I would just kind of hold it in place like that. So that's superior thoracic, and again, here, that is your costo cervical trunk, right? So we got those two, and that matches up to that drawing, all right? Now, we follow down a little farther, and this is where we start to run into some uh, variation. So what I want you to do is concentrate on the drawing that I just supplied to you. All right. The variation one. I want you to understand that one first. Then we'll go back to the handout drawing so you can see how it's different. Right. But let's just look at what's actually in the body and then we'll compare it to what you would find in a textbook or, or like an atlas or whatever, um, because this this body does have a little bit of a variation. All right, so now we go down a little further and we're looking in this area right here. And what I want you to see is that we have two main branches, one going medially, right? And one going laterally right there. Now I'm just gonna turn the camera a touch. All right, so we're gonna look at this a little bit more on like that, just changing, all right? So instead of looking this way, I just turn the camera a little bit. So I'm looking this way instead, just gives us a little bit of a better picture. And again, we see the main vessel right here, right? So this is our axillary artery that I'm holding here. And we see we have a branch going laterally and a branch going medially right there. And I'll just grab those two, see, right like that. All right, so going laterally, that's gonna be your, and that's the one I forgot to label on that drawing. Um, you guys can just, uh, Add it in there. I'll try to update it and I'll re-upload it as soon as we're done. I just don't want to take the time right now. But that is your thoracoacromial trunk. All right. So this right here, this guy right here is your thoracoacromial trunk. Now, notice how this one splits. See? See how it splits a couple times here? And all of those branches, where do they go to? They go to the pectoral muscles that I have covered up right here. So you can see here's, there's pectoralis minor, right? The other branch over here is coming down here towards pectoralis major, see? So all those branches, thoracochromial trunk, are going to come down and they're going to supply 
pectoralis minor, pectoralis major. That's going to be the giveaway for those. Thoracochromial trunk going towards the pectoral muscles. And that'll be, here's the trunk right here. And then it just branches into these muscular branches going towards the pectoral muscles. All right. So that's going laterally. Going medially, see how this guy splits right here, right? So we have this branch comes over and it divides here. Now, what we're going to say is that this branch is your lateral thoracic artery, lateral thoracic, all right? That's what you would normally find here, lateral thoracic. Now, lateral thoracic typically would go this way towards this muscle right here that I'm moving, which is serratus anterior, right? So you can see how this is going right over, and you see if I move serratus anterior, you can see that moving. That would be what you would normally see here, lateral thoracic, but note that we now have this branch, right? That's diving deeper down there. And that's gonna be your thoracodorsal artery going down that way. So we got lateral thoracic coming over here. We got thoracodorsal going down that way. And thoracodorsal, where does that one go? I'm gonna move the arm out a little bit here. So let me get this out of the way like that. And thoracodorsal is gonna go towards your latissimus dorsi muscle, which is the one that I'm moving right here. And hopefully you guys can see here, right? It's going to go down. It goes underneath of this stuff and it's in this fatty tissue right here. But this is all, see how it's kind of pulling on that there, right? That's thoracodorsal going down towards latissimus dorsi right there. Okay. So we got those two. So again, there's really here where they're combined right here you can just pick your name. Uh, I'm going to call this lateral thoracic because that is what would normally branch off of here and it would just continue over this way. And then I'm going to say coming off of lateral thoracic right there, we have thoracodorsal going down like that, just the way I labeled it on there. All right. But note that there really is no name. You're just kind of guessing here where they're combined because it's, it's not the way it would normally so I would just say follow this branch and it splits here, here, and it's either going to be this one, which is lateral thoracic, or that one down there, right, which is thoracodorsal. Okay, so again, they split like this, lateral thoracic, that one, thoracodorsal, that one. Okay, now we're going to go down just a little more distally to this area right down in here. And notice, and I'm, I'm going to move the camera down in one second, but notice we got this stuff kind of sitting on top. See if I can take this and I can move it one way or the other. And you see the artery underneath of these vessels here. These are all nerves that we're going to come back to. So we're just going to move those nerves out of the way a little bit so we can get right down to this spot. You see how we got a couple branches there and whoops. And if I move this over, see, we got a branch going down right there. So we're just going to zoom in on this a touch. So let's move down a little. And zoom in a little bit like that. Oops. Uh, sorry, camera's just not sitting the way I want it to. There we go. Let's just shift back up and switch. Just want you to be able to get that reference in there. There we go. Sorry, right like that. Okay, so I just want you to still be able to see those branches that we just did up here, right? And then we're going to go down a little bit farther right to this area. So look right here. If I go this way, you can see I'm in between. See these two branches kind of going laterally right there, right? One, two. That's going to be your anterior and posterior humeral circumflex arteries. Okay, anterior, you see I can get in between them like that. Anterior and posterior humeral circumflex. The anterior one is a little bit more anterior, right? Posterior one's more posterior. And you hear that word circumflex in there. And that's telling you it's traveling around something. And in, these, in this case, these are humeral circumflex arteries, which means they pass around the humerus either anteriorly or posteriorly, right? So they split. So if the humerus is 
here in between like where the forceps are that these these vessels go around the anterior posterior side of the humerus okay and that's these two guys right there those two so those are the ones going laterally and again that matches your drawing then we go meet oh, i forgot to label that one too oh boy I'm being stupid here. I will update this drawing. I apologize. I'm, I'm I was in a hurry and I realized I didn't label two things here. So, uh, all right. So you see on the drawing anterior and posterior humeral circumflex. Then at the same spot, you got a branch going medially, which is right here. All right. So we kind of move this over right there, and you see this branch. See this branch going medially, right there. Right. So we got the two going laterally. We move it over, and you got that one right there going medially that is going to be your scapular circumflex artery your scapular circumflex artery and that's going to be this guy right here okay sorry i forgot to label that and that one is going to wrap around the lateral border of the scapula and are going to emerge on the posterior side of the body okay so we got those two right there. So you got, you can see these here, that's your anterior, posterior humeral circumflex. And then right on the other side, right there, you can see your scapular. Just grab this like this right there, your scapular circumflex. You can see that one. If I move it over, you see it diving. And I got, oh my goodness, come on. Stay in place there. You guys stay out of the way. And you can see that one kind of diving down right there. And it's going to go way down in here, and it's going to wrap around the lateral side of the scapula. All right. Now, we're going to follow this down just a little farther. And now we're past, like, in this area, this is where we would call this axillary artery. Once we get past those branches, we're going to start calling this your brachial artery here. And if we follow down your brachial artery, like this here, if I can grab it, we follow down your brachial artery, we see this branch, which then splits here and here. This is going to be your deep brachial artery, deep brachial in here, all right? And sometimes you might see, in, instead of it splitting down here, there might be two separate branches or maybe three separate branches coming off of brachial right here. No matter what this looks like, anything that's diving deep in this area would all be deep brachial but sometimes it looks like you might have one main branch like this that doesn't even split until it goes to the posterior side of the arm or you might see it split like this or you might see a couple branches come off here no matter what that looks like it would all be deep brachial but i tried to draw it just like you're seeing it there so your drawing kind of matches up what you're seeing all right so that's as far down as you need to follow that variation drawing from this point down farther you can just go back to the handouts, which I'm going to put up under the screen again. All right, so let's zoom out a touch. and I'm going to turn us back in line with the arm here. So let's do something like that. Okay, and let's uncover a little bit farther down. Huh? Uh, no, no, I'm going to fix it. I got to take a picture of it and re-upload it, so it's fine. We'll, we'll do it later. As soon as we're done okay so we're gonna move down just a little because we want to see where these arteries go down here so we're just gonna shift down so now we can see a little bit more of the arm going down to the forearm right so here's the anterior uh, here's the arm there's the forearm here's the elbow joint here so we're gonna follow these things down so we're gonna move I'm just moving biceps out of the way little bit let me get this guy out of here some of the superficial stuff out of the way okay so let's grab this here all right there we go so I'm, I'm holding the brachial artery here and notice like right here all right we're just gonna leave this kind of up highlighted for a second let's see if that'll stay like that, that area. Now, let me grab the drawing. All right, so we're looking at the brachial artery drawing. We're gonna be right, we're right down in this area. Now I'm just gonna turn it so it's kinda facing the same way. So we're looking like right here, right? And I highlighted the brachial artery there because I wanna draw your attention to this part 
of your handout, right? And you see here, what we're showing is that we have these arteries, and in this case, it would be the brachial artery. And on either side of the artery are these smaller veins, okay? So these are how the deep brachial veins run alongside of the brachial artery, okay? And this is going to be like this throughout the entire upper and lower extremity. As soon as we get out to the extremities, the arteries and the veins, they run right next to each other, and it's always one large artery flanked by two or more smaller veins on either side with these little communicating branches that actually join and wrap around the artery. So these are all like, it just kind of looks like one big thing here, but it's really an artery and, and two veins. As we get even further down the arm onto the forearm, you're not even going to really be able to see the veins anymore. They get really, really small. And if they're not full of blood, they're totally transparent. So you just don't even notice that they're there, right? But I'm going to try to zoom in on this area so you can kind of see what this picture looks like right there. So let's zoom in a little bit. Let's see if we can give you a better picture here. Let's see. That's about as close as I can't really get any closer here. That's, that's about as close as we're going to get. But let's see if we can separate this just a little. So you can see what I mean here. All right, let's come in here. Here's me grab my scissors. And let's just tease this apart quick. Right, something like that. Just teasing apart the fascia a little bit. There we go. All right. So look right there. And let's pull this back out. And here is, there's the artery in the middle. And then notice on either side, see? Got a little vein there. Maybe I can, you know, maybe if I put my finger under it, you'll see the contrast a little bit better. Something like that. You guys see that there? That's better, right? So we got the artery in the middle, right, flanked by a vein and a vein on either side. And you see up here where I didn't separate it, see, it just looks kind of like one thing with like a dark line on the side. There's the vein. There's the vein there with the artery in the middle. And here I just kind of teased those things apart a little bit. If I can make a little space, a little tough. There we go. Kind of like that. Okay. So you guys can see the difference there. But, you know, I'm not going to separate that the whole way. But as we move farther down, that's just how the veins kind of flank the arteries the whole way. So you don't have to uh, separately identify the deep veins along with the arteries. If you found the artery, the vein is already next to it. Okay? So that's just showing you how that matches up to that part. Now, we're going to follow this down and... Here again, we got that brachial artery is coming down, 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 down here. And we're going to cross the elbow. Now I'm going to move the camera down a little bit here. Something like this. Okay. And let's open up this area. Sorry, I got some superficial stuff we got to get out of the way. Kind of like that, that, and right right here. So look here and you'll see here's that brachial artery and vein and here is the artery that I kind of teased out right here and notice how see how it splits side to side. So the brachial artery is doing this this way this way and that's where the brachial artery ends and we have your ulnar and radial arteries. All right so this guy is your ulnar artery here this guy is your radial artery there. We can see that split right there, radial ulnar. And you're always going to know, if I was showing this, I'd say, okay, here's the medial side. Here's the lateral side. This is pinky side. This is thumb side. That way you know which one is going to be which here. So we know that the ulna is on the pinky side of the forearm, right? So the ulnar artery is going to point towards the pinky side of the wrist. Radial artery is going to point towards the thumb side of the wrist because the radius is on the thumb side of the forearm, right? 
So that's how you're going to tell the difference there. And again, I would orient you there. Since you can't see the hand, I would tell you which side we're looking at, right? But that is brachial artery splitting and ulnar radial. All right. Now, let me show you where that is on the drawing just so we can keep on following this down. And that's going to be right here. So we were just seeing this. We're seeing the brachial come, split, split, ulnar, radial. That's the part we were just looking at, right? Now we want to follow this over, and we see the ulnar continues, but there's a branch off of ulnar right here, which is your common interosseous artery, common interosseous. And then if we follow common interosseous just a little bit, we see that it splits again into your um, posterior and anterior interosseous arteries right here and here. I know it's a little there, maybe like that. All right, so common splits into posterior and anterior interosseous arteries. So we want to see this. We're going to follow down ulnar until we see common, and then we'll try to see where common splits into anterior and posterior. Now, what you want to note here, and I, and I put this on here, the common interosseous artery, you may not be able to see this branch because it's hidden by the muscle pronator teres. All right. We can see it here, but sometimes you may not be able to. So, Let's look right here. So here is your pronator teres muscle, this guy. And let's just isolate it there. So I'm just going to outline pronator teres. Here's pronator teres right there. We can see the ulnar artery going down. And you can see the ulnar artery passing under pronator teres right there. Okay. So in order to see these branches we want to see, we're going to move pronator teres out of the way a little bit. So I'm going to come down here. And I'm going to open this up a bit like this, right like that. There we go. And hopefully now you can see here is ulnar. Okay. And right there, I don't know how well we can see this. Can we see that split a little bit? Just, just a touch right there. See, right at the end, right there. See that division? That's going to be where common interosseous branches off. So the one going this way still is ulnar. The one going this way is common interosseous. So that's about as far down as we're going to see. It means I don't, oh, can I grab it? That guy right there is common interosseous. And then common is going to split into anterior and posterior. So we're not going to see anterior and posterior right here because it's happening completely underneath the pronator teres. I'm not going to be able to get that guy out of the way. So you can at least see common interosseous at that spot, but not anterior and posterior interosseous. Okay. So let's go down a little farther. So let's move this down a touch. So we're getting more down onto the forearm here and I'll just get it so that we can still see radial and ulnar. Let's just shift down a touch more that. Let's uncover the hand now. Let's get this all uncovered. Let's get this down, everything back the way it was, like that. All right. So we got radial and ulnar. We already saw where that one branch was for common interosseous underneath here. And you can see that radial stays very superficial all the way down. See how we can get to this all the way down, thumb side of the wrist here, right? Here's the thumb over here. And radial stays very superficial. That's why when you take your pulse at your wrist, you do it on the thumb side of your anterior forearm because that's where you can palpate the radial artery. On the other side, the ulnar artery, that one is underneath of some muscles over here. So it's a little bit hidden. You can feel your ulnar pulse, but you have to dig for it. Where the radial one, you don't. It's right up underneath the skin. All right, so we can see the radial stays superficial. Ulnar is going to be a little deeper. So let's see how we can find the ulnar vessels. What we want to do is you want to take flexor, digitorum, superficialis and move that one out of the way a little bit. So we're going to move over flexor, digitorum, superficialis. Let me get this superficial one out of the way. So we're going to slide that over. And then you see these vessels that we just uncovered here. Here are your ulnar vessels. Now, what I'm grabbing here is ulnar artery, vein, and nerve all together here. But let's go proximally 
right there. And you see that split here and here, okay? This is your ulnar nerve, which we're going to re-go over. We're going to do that one in a little bit, but this is your ulnar artery and vein, okay? And just look right here. If we grab the ulnar artery, see how they're connected? Right, you guys should be able to see that move a little bit when I grab it. See there? So you see how the ulnar artery right here passes underneath the pronator teres and all these other muscles, and it emerges right here underneath of flexor digitorum superficialis, this muscle, right? So we got to move this guy out of the way if we want to see the ulnar artery and vein going down farther. All right. So you see how that stuff's a little covered up. And again, that's why you're not going to feel your pulse on your pinky side of the wrist too much because it's underneath of that flexor digitorum superficialis muscle. All right. Now, um, right down in here, we can see your anterior interosseous artery. All right. But we have to move some things. So you want to know, we said that ulnar splits into common interosseous and ulnar continuous, and then common interosseous splits in the anterior posterior interosseous. So you hear that word interosseous. It means between bones, right? We've said that word before. That uh, the bones we're talking about here are the radius and the ulna. So the interosseous arteries run right in between the radius and the ulna. One of them does it on the anterior side of the forearm, that's your anterior interosseous artery, and one of them does it on the posterior side of the forearm, that's your posterior interosseous. So we're on the anterior side here, so we're gonna look for anterior interosseous. And in order to find that one, you're gonna find your pronator quadratus muscle, okay? So we're gonna loosen the wrist a little bit. We're gonna move all these muscles, we're gonna move flexor digitorum superficialis out of the way. That uncovers flexor digitorum profundus and flexor pollicis longus, those two. We're going to move those two out of the way as well. And when we do that, that uncovers this flat square-shaped muscle here, which is pronator quadratus. And what I want you to see here is once you've found pronator quadratus, we can see these vessels right here. See these guys are moving right there? That's your anterior interosseous artery and vein. And notice how if we follow that down, 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 see how it passes underneath of pronator quadratus right there. Right? So you see this thing that I'm grabbing passes under pronator quadratus. Those are your anterior interosseous arteries and veins right there. All right? So that's how we're going to find that one. Locate pronator quadratus. Look for a vessel going deep. To pronator quadratus. That's anterior interosseous. Now, posterior interosseous is in the same spot on the posterior side of the forearm, but these it's a little harder to move these muscles out of the way enough to see a clear picture of posterior interosseous. So don't worry about identifying that one. Just worry about finding anterior interosseous on the anterior side. All right. So once you've gotten that, now we want to see how radial and ulnar arteries cross the wrist to get to the hand, okay? So I'm gonna show you this on your drawing real quick. And again, if, if you're getting lost at all, just know that you're gonna be able to come back later with the drawings and you're gonna be able to pause this and, and orient yourself and you'll be able to follow along pretty well. All right, so if we look here, so we're going to follow the radial artery and the ulnar artery and where they're going to cross the wrist here. And what I want you to see is that they join together. See how this loops around like that? And it does it two different ways. It does it there and it does it there. So we're going to have these two spots where the radial and the ulnar arteries are going to join together, right? They're going to form these arches. And we're going to have two. We're going to have a deep palmar arch and a superficial palmar arch. Now, the deep one, we're not going to see because it's covered up by some stuff here. But the superficial one, we can follow. And that's what we want to find is this arch right in the palm of the hand. And then coming off of that arch, we're going to look for these branches going down along the metacarpals. Those are going to be your common digital arteries. And then we're going to look as we get down towards the fingers, the common digitals are going to split again into your proper digital arteries. So in this area, we want to find the superficial palmar arch common digital arteries, 
and proper digital arteries. So let's find all that stuff. So let's move down a little bit so we can see the hand better. And I'm going to lift the hand up a little bit to get a little closer to the camera. Just steady that. All right. So here we're looking at the palm of the hand. And what we're going to do is take your palmaris brevis muscle, right? We're just going to reflect it like that. And we're going to take the palmar aponeurosis and we're going to reflect that like that. Sorry, I left the sound on my phone turned on. That was just a notification. If you guys heard that. Um, and right here this is what we want to see. Okay. So here is that ulnar artery right here. And notice how the ulnar artery is coming and you see how it's curving over this way. See that? Right like that. And it sometimes will connect to your radial artery. And let me just re-grab the radial artery right here. All right, so right, right there is my radial artery that I'm grabbing there. And the radial artery is going to go underneath of those muscles in the thenar eminence. All right. And then it should emerge like right here and complete this arch. Now, what we have here is an incomplete palmar arch. So you can see it start to curve this way, but it's not really connecting into the radial artery over here. So sometimes it's a full, a complete arch, sometimes it's not. But you are always going to at least see ulnar arteries start to curve over this way. So we're just going to call this the superficial palmar arch, this bit here, even though it's not connecting in with your radial artery here. All right. Even though it's not a complete arch, we're still going to call it the arch here. And then coming off of the arch, here are those common digital arteries, right? Common digitals coming off there. Now we're going to follow common digital out. We'll, we'll look at this one here and watch what happens when I spread these fingers apart like that. See that? You guys should be able to pretty, and I'll put my finger right behind it, right? Right there. There we go. That's a good picture. All right. So here is your common digital. Sorry. Common digital splitting into proper digital arteries there. And you see how they're going to run alongside the fingers. Okay. So we got the arch here. We got common digital, common digital splitting into proper, proper there. That's about the best picture I'm going to be able to give you, right? And it's going to do the same thing in between all the fingers, but we can see it right here. That's probably a good picture of all of it. Now, notice you also see these guys. See this that I'm grabbing? This that I'm grabbing there? Those are nerves. So when I grab this bundle right here, this is actually common digital artery and common digital veins and um, nerves going along with this as well. Okay, there. And here is just the artery branching into those uh, proper digital arteries there. All right. So we get that whole part. So that's as, as much as we need to do on the arteries. All right. That's what you need to identify. So out of all of the stuff down here in the hand, you're just going to worry about those ones that I show you. You're not going to look at the deep pommel arch. You're not going to be able to see it. And, and all of that stuff kind of interconnects like I'm showing here in the drawing. But we're just going to worry about superficial to common to proper. That's it. Okay. So that should take care of all of the arteries. And you're going to, again, want to use a combination between the drawing that I put up on the lab module and also the handout drawing. And again, just note that I, I did not label those two things that we talked about on that drawing under the lab module, I'm going to delete that upload as soon as we're done with class today, and I will re-upload it with those two parts labeled. Okay, so if you've already downloaded it, as soon as we're done with class, just look for the newer version, re-download it, and delete that old copy, at least so they have the parts labeled that I forgot to put on that um, drawing that I made for you guys this morning. All right, so let's go to the veins. Now, we talked about how the deep veins, they're like this, right? They run alongside the arteries. So we're not going to worry about the deep veins. And that would be all of the same stuff we had on here. Just replace every A with a V, and it would be the same exact drawing because it looks exactly the same. What we're going to do now are the superficial veins, all right? And that's going to be this drawing here, superficial brachial veins. These are ones that are 
much more superficial and up underneath your skin. So when we say that somebody's like really vascular or somebody's like you're, you're, you're cutting, you have very low body fat and you can just see like veins on people's biceps and their forearms and stuff. Those are all the superficial veins. And that's what we're going to be looking at here. All right. So, um, make sure you get out this drawing superficial brachial veins here. And let me just move the camera back up in place here. Zoom out just a touch. Let's move back up. Let's look right here. We want to start on the anterior side of the elbow joint. That's where we want to begin here. All right. So let's, let me re reorganize this stuff a little bit. And this guy be here, this is here, this broke. Uh, okay. All right. This broke off, unfortunately. Uh, so we're going to have to stick this back together, kind of like that. And this is going to be here, here. All right. Well, I'm going to have to kind of hold this in place here. All right. So let's kind of grab this and let's see if I can hold this together. Something like that. Yeah, something like this. So you see this, what I'm moving right here? These guys that I'm moving, these are the superficial veins that are sitting on top of this other stuff. So take a good look at what I'm showing you here. Notice that we have this vessel running down along the medial side. So you see this one that I'm moving here. So you can see it starts up there, right? Continues over here, so that's one vessel going down the medial side. You can see the one I'm moving here on the lateral side. See how it's it's kind of small up here, right? But then it continues down over here. And then if I grab both of these sides, you see that we have this one right here, this guy, that connects the medial and the lateral veins there. All right, so take a look at that. Now, I'm gonna switch over to the drawing so you can see how you're going to correspond this. We're going to turn the drawing, right? So it sits, see? This area here, that area right there. Now, notice, you see what this looks like here? Move over to here. See that? Look at how that's exactly what I was just showing you. All right? See how it looks kind of like an H? So we got this vessel on this side, this one on this side, and then we have that connection right there. So this is a variation of what your most textbooks would show you looking like this. This is a little bit of a variation. You're going to expect that it could look nothing like either one of these two. These are just the most, the two most common presentations for these arteries as they cross the anterior side of your elbow. Either it looks more like this or like that. Most of the time it's closer to one of these two. This one is more like this. So again, look at that real fast and then I'll re-hold that part up so you can see it again. Just make sure that you can correspond those things here and here. See as I'm moving that, see how it kind of looks like an H, right? Here, here, and then there's that bit in the middle. I can grab it again. There. There we go. See how that kind of matches up. All right. So that means that the one on this side, this is your basilic artery. Or yeah, artery, sorry, vein. This is your basilic vein here. The one that I'm grabbing that broke over here that I'm kind of holding together, this is your cephalic vein here and here, right? That's cephalic. And where those two join across the anterior side of the elbow joint, this guy right here, that is your median cubital vein, median cubital right there. So basilic, cephalic, median cubital. All right, so basilic stays along the medial side of the arm and the forearm. Cephalic stays along the lateral side of the arm and the forearm. And median cubital is where they join in front of the elbow. So these are the vessels that you get blood drawn from. If you guys donate blood, they're going to put that needle into one of these vessels here. And it all depends on – they look for the biggest one, and it depends on how – uh, the orientation of these uh, veins are as it passes the anterior side of your elbow. Sometimes they might go into median cubital, sometimes cephalic, sometimes basilic. It depends on which one is, is better. But these are the ones that you get blood drawn from.
Okay, and then off of median cubital, again, we'll kind of grab this. See how we do have this branch right here coming off a of median cubital? This would be a median antibrachial vein kind of coming down along the middle of the forearm. All right, and that one I do show it on here, just not on the variation, but we can see it here, and that would be the one going down the middle right there. See, median antibrachial. I don't show it on this one, but... Um, because a lot of times median uh, antibrachial is missing when we have this particular configuration. But on this body, we do have one. So you're going to want to identify median antibrachial vein as well. All right. So that's really the only spot. We're just going to look right around the elbow for the superficial vessels. That's where we're going to find them. Don't worry about finding them really anywhere else. You do want to note, though, where cephalic and basilic vein see where do these two veins join the deeper veins so you can see the basilic drains directly into your brachial veins right there and then cephalic vein goes up 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 a bit higher and drains into your subclavian vein those are the two spots we want to know where they drain um and let's just move up a little bit Let's just grab this here. So here is your basilic vein. I'm holding basilic there. And notice how basilic is diving down, 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 down. And look at where it goes right next to, see? Here's your brachial artery that we just did before. And you see how basilic is down, 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 down. And it's going to join in with the brachial veins right here. So this is where the superficial one joins and drains into the deeper veins there, which is what your drawing shows. But cephalic, this guy, all right. Now, this one, and this is really not going the way that it would normally go. So let me put this back for a second. His cephalic vein was very, very small. Okay, so we can see it here, and you see how it's it's got, it, it's not dark at all. It's because there was really no blood flowing through this in this area at all. For whatever reason, the blood was just not going this way too much, and it's really, really tiny. But this would run up along the side of your biceps, okay? And let me just keep my finger here. See, we're going to slide up. Now we're in between. And sorry, let me just zoom out just a touch like that. And now we're in between pec major and deltoid. And we can see your cephalic vein here. And you see here it is a little darker because we do have some blood there. So that would travel up along the biceps. And again, it got real small in that area, so it's real hard to follow. But we can see it again here coming up, up, up. And then right here is see how it's going to dive down there. And that's where it's going to join in with that subclavian vein. So what we're going to do is just take pec major and we're just going to fold it down out of the way a little bit like that. And you can see cephalic coming up here and look at right here, right there. Let's see if this will stay. Yeah, something like, like that. So here is that, those veins, right, that we're putting back in place there. This is subclavian vein right here. And we can see the cephalic is going down, down, down right there. And it's going to join into subclavian right there. Okay. So that's where cephalic joins and meets the deeper drainage right there, which is just the same thing that your drawing is doing. Now, we're going to put a little note on cephalic vein to say that this is where if you're going to get a pacemaker or you're going to get a central line put in, it's going to be installed through the cephalic vein. Right. On this side of the body, we're on the right side of the body right now. This is where you would get a central line put in. And a central line is basically just a, a, it's a receptacle that has a membrane on it that you can push injections into. Uh, and it's so that you don't have to re-tap a vein every time you want to inject something into the body. So what they do is they you have this kind of receptacle that sits on the outside of your body with a membrane on it. Right? That that receptacle is attached to a tube, and that tube is placed inside of the cephalic vein. So you kind of thread the tube into the cephalic vein a little bit and, and, and close that off, and, and the vein will kind of heal itself around that tube. 
And then you have that receptacle on the outside that allows you to inject things directly into the spout vein. That would be for a central line. And typically that would be installed on the right hand side here. The same exact thing is going to be on the left hand side on the other side of the body. And that's where if you were going to have a pacemaker installed, it would be installed typically on the left hand side of the body. Same type of thing. Pacemaker would be right here on the outside of the body sitting on top of the muscles here. And then the wires for the pacemaker that have to get threaded down to your heart would go into that cephalic vein and the wires would travel through the cephalic vein into the subclavian vein, into the superior vena cava, into your heart. All right, and that's, that's how we get access into your heart via the cephalic vein. All right, and just note that typically central lines on the right, um, uh, pacemakers on the left usually. And it's mostly because for the wires for your pacemaker, the uh, pathway to get to your heart is a more constant, gentle arc going into your heart. So it's a little easier to feed the wires in from the uh, left-hand side instead of the right-hand side. It's not impossible on the right, it's just easier on the left. So that's typically why they choose the left-hand side for that. Okay, so that takes care of the superficial brachial veins. Now, the next thing we wanna do are the, art, um, blah, 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 the nerves, all right? And that's gonna be this drawing here. Uh, sorry, upside down. Here we go. The brachial plexus drawing. So you're going to want to look at this. Specifically, this part of it is what we're going to start on right here. Now, um, this does match up to the right-hand side of the body. So I'm going to kind of get you to where this drawing is applicable. We're going to kind of zoom in, and I'll frame. I'll kind of point to a part of the drawing and point to the body. Point to another part, point to the body. to kind of orient you to this. All right, so get out this drawing for a second, and let me fix the camera. And we're going to do the nerves now. And these are nerves that are going to control your upper extremity. All right, so let's zoom out a little bit here. Whoops, knock the cord, sorry. Come back on just one second. Okay. All right, so you can see pectoralis major here. I'm going to move this back out of the way along with pectoralis minor. We're going to get those veins out of the way so everything's kind of moved over and we're looking at the right side of the neck again so again we've been on the right side of the body the whole time just kind of cover that back up so we're looking in here on the right side of the neck now we can see again just to reorient ourselves we can see that anterior scalene muscle right here and we can see your subclavian artery right there which we've already done now Seeing that subclavian artery, I'm just going to move it down just a touch. Actually, I take it back. I'm going to kind of put it right in the middle, just the way this is. I'm going to hold it right there. And notice how we have some things next to it. See this that I'm moving there and this here and that up there. Those are all nerves. Okay, so we got the artery here flanked by all of these nerves. All right, and those are, that's all part of the brachial plexus. So... Let's, we're going to zoom in just a little to get a little bit tighter view right here. Something like that. And actually, we're going to just a little more. Something like this. Whoops. There we go. Let's just move up just a little. Right there. All right, so let's correspond this to your drawing. And we're going to hold the drawing like this. And that's going to correspond to here. So what I want you to see is if we kind of lay the drawing like this here. Let me grab my probe. That anterior scalene muscle is kind of laying right here. All right, so we see the anterior scalene right there corresponded to the drawing, and it's going to be like right here. All right. So just past your anterior scalene is where we're going to see this part here, which is C5, C6, C7, C8, T1. These you see are the roots of the brachial plexus. So we're going to be able to find them just past anterior scalene. Now, notice that we got roots there. Then you see these dotted lines here, 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 right? These are the levels of the brachial plexus. So you're going to start at roots. That's where it starts. You see the roots kind of combine, and they form trunks. Then the trunks divide here, here, 
here, see we got these trunks and they divide, and those are going to be your um, divisions. Then the divisions recombine, see here, here, and there, into cords, and then the cords split apart all along here into nerves, right? So the levels of the brachial plexus are going to go roots, trunks, divisions, cords, nerves. Those are going to be the levels, and let's correspond where they are on the body. So we said roots are going to be right up in here, just past anterior scalene. Trunks are going to be just a little past that, so we're going to have trunks here. Divisions are going to be a little past that here. Cords are going to be a little past that here. Nerves are going to be a little past that down here, right? So we're going to go roots, trunks, divisions, cords, nerves. And again, if I lay this on here, it's going to be roots, trunks, divisions, cords, nerves. All right, that's kind of how we're going to go here. So we're going to do each part, and I'll go back and forth with the drawing there so you can see what's what. So let's start with the roots. All right, so let's do this a little bit. And I'm just going to hold this out like that. we got the artery in the middle. I'm going to create a little space there. And if I hold it like this, you guys should be able to see one, two, three, four, and then I'm holding the fifth thing there. And let me just, let's come up a little tighter here. Let's do that. We'll just zoom in a little bit more. Come on down. Get right where I want you to be there. So we're just zooming in a little there. Again, hopefully you guys can see this better now. Yeah, there we go. All right. So you got one, two, three, four, five things. Okay. And that's going to be, I'm just going to hold the artery there. That's going to be C5, C6, C7, C8, T1. Those are the roots of the brachial plexus. So again, C5, C6, C7, C8, T1. All right. That's going to be the roots. Now, we're going to follow the roots down, and they're going to combine to form trunks. So let's loosen this up a little bit, and that's going to be right here. Right here. You see how C5 and C6 join right there? Superior trunk. C7 becomes middle trunk right there. C8, T1, they join together right there, inferior trunk. All right, so inferior, middle, superior trunks. All right, and again, look at your drawing. Hopefully, you're following along here, and notice how it does the same thing. We found C5, C6, C7, C8, T1. C5, C6 join. C7 here, C8, T1 join there. So we just found these and those. All right, and again, that's here and here. C5, C6, C7, C8, T1, superior, middle, inferior trunk. All right. Now, we want to find the divisions, right? So we come down here. Now we see where the trunks are, and we see that each trunk, superior, middle, inferior, has an A and a P division. That's an anterior and a posterior division. Anterior, posterior, anterior, posterior. All right? And they literally are anterior and posterior. The anterior ones are more superficial. The posterior ones are a little deeper. So let's find those divisions. So we're going to grab this, kind of hold this out like that and like this. Now we have the artery here, and I'm going to move the artery over for this, I think, like that. There we go. Something like this. And what you want to see here is here's the inferior trunk, and you see posterior anterior division. Here's the middle trunk posterior, anterior division. Here's the superior trunk there, posterior, anterior division. So if I hold it like this, you can pretty much see all of them like that. All right. So kind of, I don't think it'll stay real well, but we have inferior trunk, anterior, posterior, middle trunk, anterior, posterior, 
superior trunk, anterior, posterior. All right, and notice, see the anterior ones, see? They're more anterior, see like that. These are all the anterior ones, and notice how behind it, see back there? All the posterior ones are, are a little deeper. It's around two different levels there. All right, so that's how you're gonna see the divisions, and I would spread it apart like this, and I'd say here we have one, two, three things. They split. You can see those splits there, 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 and out of all those, I want you to identify this one, or this one, or this one, or that one, or I'd hold this out and say I want you to identify this one, or this one, and those would be all those divisions. All right, now, the divisions are going to form chords. Let's get back in here, turn that right. So here, we got the divisions, and you see how they recombine to form these chords here, lateral, posterior, medial chord. Now, the names of the chords are based upon their location around the axillary artery. So let's just scooch down a little. I'm gonna turn just a touch here like this. Something like that. And again, here were all the divisions that we just had. And as we follow them down, what I want you to see is here is the axillary artery right here, this guy. And notice how if I hold this up like this, see how we have these guys here. See this right there? And you see this over here. Notice how they're passing around the axillary artery on the medial side and on the lateral side here. That's going to be your medial cord and your lateral cord there. All right, because they're going to be on either side. You can really see it. If I kind of hold it up like that, you can really see how these two things pass on either side of that axillary artery. Medial cord, this guy, which we can see continuing here. Lateral cord, which you can see here and here. All right. The posterior cord is behind all of this, right? So what we're going to want to do is take the axillary artery and move it out of the way. So we got these two guys here. I'm going to let that go. We're going to take the axillary artery and we're just going to move it over. And what do you see back behind here? There. That's the posterior cord. You notice how it's it's under the axillary artery back there. So again, we're going to grab where this stuff comes together. We're going to grab these artery or these nerves and we're just going to pull on them a little bit so that we can raise these two guys up. Medial cord, lateral cord. Or I can hold these two up and say we got this one and this one. I'm going to take this guy and just move it over, and I want you to identify this that's behind it, this nerve behind here, and that's going to be posterior cord. And look at how the posterior cord's got all of those. There's the three posterior divisions all coming together. Posterior division of the inferior trunk, middle trunk, superior trunk right there, and they all join together to form that posterior cord, which is behind the axillary artery. So again, these things are named for their position around the axillary artery here. And then the cords are going to split again to form nerves, or what we're going to call nerves. These are all nerves. It's just, just a naming thing here. So we had the cords. We just identified those. And then notice how, see, these are all going to split and form these nerves. And we're going to have these five nerves that we're going to worry about. There's more than this, but these are the ones, these are the main functional nerves that control your muscles in your upper extremity. So those are the ones we're going to worry about. Now notice on these that the first one, the third one, and the fifth one I have shaded in. See this M shape here that's shaded in? And then you see these other two here that are not shaded. What I'm trying to show you here is that the, these three, this one, this one and this one are more superficial, and this one and this one are deeper. So they're on two different levels. So it's kind of like this. And let's just zoom out just a touch so I can get my hand underneath here. All right, so it's kind of like this. 
We got three, a little bit more superficial, and we have two deeper. Sorry, I know this. Not on camera. Okay. So we're going to have three that are on top. That'll be the first, the third, and the fifth. And then the second and fourth are a little deeper, see, on a different level. So it does. it is five, right, but two different levels, three and then two underneath like that. So that's your picture there. Like that. We're going to worry about the three on top first. So we're going to be looking right here. And what you want to find now is that M shape that I was showing you on your drawing. And that's going to be this. Hold it just like that. There's that M. See it? See as I'm moving this around a little bit? You can see that M shape, right? Here's the first one. Oops, if I can grab it. Oh boy. That one. Here's the third one. There. There's the fifth one. There. Up, down, up, down. There's the M. So this is musculocutaneous. This guy, musculocutaneous. The one in the middle here is median nerve. This one. And the one over here is your ulnar nerve. That. Musculocutaneous median ulnar. And that is that M shape that we want to see. And that's what I'm kind of moving around here. So on the practical, I would hold this up and say, look, we got this M shape here, 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 here. One, two, three things. I want you to identify the first one or the second one or the third one. And those would be on your drawing that first, the third, and the fifth, right? So again, just corresponding that, I'm going to orient this exactly the same way, right? So we got the M right there which is going to be like this here, that M shape. So musculocutaneous, median, ulnar. And again, musculocutaneous, median, ulnar. All right, there's the M. So you find that first. And then to see the other ones, we're going to take those, all this stuff here, and we're just going to move it out of the way. So we're going to open this up little bit here, and I guess we'll go, yeah, I think we'll do it right there, right there. And then you see these two that I'm spreading apart right there. See those two there. And this picture kind of stinks because where those two things split is like right underneath this, and we're not going to be able to see it real well. But we can at least see what they become right there. I think I'm going to have to do it like that and kind of like that. So those two are going to be the other ones. This is going to be your... Um, axillary and radial nerves and see how they're behind. They're coming off of that posterior cord, which is right here. See, maybe you can see a little better if I move it like that. I'm holding the posterior cord there. See, I'm moving the posterior cord back and forth and the posterior cord splits into your axillary and radial nerves. So it's like this, uh, axillary, radial, those two. And it's those two down there. So again, we got the the M shape that we started with. See, it's a bit more superficial here. And then we got to dive way down in there, move that stuff out of the way to see those other two down in there. Axillary. Radial. Oh, God. I'm trying to do this looking at the camera. Depth is just hard for me to see with the instruments like that, those two. All right, correspond that back to the drawing. And we're looking at these two. So it was posterior cord splitting here, here, axillary, radial. And those are the ones I just showed you. All right, so um, do note this part here. See these, this tells you where all of those, each one of those five nerves, where you can find it farther down the arm. I'm not going to show you this on video because it requires me to move the camera nonstop and you're going to have a hard time following. If we were in person, I would trace these down farther and show you where they are all the way down, but I can't get it. I'd have to zoom out too far, which you won't be able to see. Or if I keep it zoomed in, I'd have to keep on moving the camera, which is just too uh, disorienting, right? So we're not going to worry about it. We're just going to get those nerves in that area, matching up to the picture like I showed you. And that is as far as you need to go. All right. So, um, I know this was a, a, a quick one. So we are done 
with the upper extremity. But you do need to spend some time on this vasculature. So even though we're done early, it's because you're going to have to watch this three, four, five, six times um, to get it down. You need the drawing handy. You need to know when I'm transitioning between arteries and veins and nerves, which I will tell you, you know, on the practical, it'll be, this is an artery question. This is a vein question. This is a nerve question, right? So you're going to know which one is which. Make sure that you can correspond the drawings to the body, switch between them pretty quickly, and figure out where you are. Uh, that's going to be really important. If you can do that and correspond to the drawings, you shouldn't have too much trouble picking out everything, uh, especially with that extra drawing I gave you for the arteries because it matches exactly what you see on the body. And it's just a little different than what we had on the handouts. So make sure you practice with those things, get good with that. And then on what day is today? Monday, right? So on Wednesday, we start lower extremity and we're going to begin with the anterior side of the lower extremity. So we're going to do the entire anterior side. So we're going to do the front of the hips, front of the thigh, front of the leg, top of the foot. We're going to do all that muscles and vasculature on Wednesday. Then next Monday, we're going to do the entire posterior side of the lower extremity. So that'll be the gluteal region, back of the thigh, back of the leg, bottom of the foot, muscles and vasculature. So make sure you do have the drawings for the lower extremity vasculature handy for the next lab because I am going to be referencing them. I will hold them up underneath the camera again, but it helps if you have a copy uh, that you can access either on your phone or a printout or something like that. All right. I will do a help session this afternoon and I will start posting up uh, quizzes for the uh, final practicals. So we'll just have a couple that will deal with the extremities. I, I'm, I'm likely going to reuse um, ones from the previous semester except for the vasculature. I, I probably will record ones for the vasculature because it looks so much different. But the muscles, they're the same. So no real difference there. So if you can pick it out on the on the quiz from a previous cadaver and you're good with that, then doing it on this one's going to be no problem at all. All right. Uh, but I will do something new for the vasculature, at least for this part, because it is significantly different and it's going to be hard to follow if, if I sh only show you the old one. So look for those. I will add them to the announcements uh, shortly. And I think that's pretty much it. Okay. So if you guys have questions, post them up. Uh, or just j jump on to the help session this afternoon. Otherwise, I will see you guys on Wednesday. Thanks.